The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Welcome once again to Stirring the Cauldron. Tonight, Barry and Connie Strom are my guests, but things are going to be a little different. They're here to talk about their new upcoming show called Channeling History right here on Para-X. So we're going to be talking about um, channeling rather than doing it, unless someone just inadvertently comes through, and with Barry, you never know. But um, we really want to let everybody know about the show in general, um, what people can expect, And also, it's a really good opportunity for all of you to get to know Barry and Connie better by asking them questions that we never get to do it when they're asking somebody on the other side, when they're talking to somebody on the other side. So here's a rare opportunity to ask the channelers rather than being channeled. And you can send me your questions or comments in private chat, and I'll pass them on. And if you're not in private chat, and you have some questions, come over to ParaX at paraxradionetwork.com and jump in with both feet in the chat. So let's get started. Barry, Connie, welcome to the show, and also welcome to ParaX. Thank you for having us. We always enjoy our time with you. Yes, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's always good to be back, and we are very excited about being able to have our own show uh, not something I ever thought we'd be doing. It's a big step, but we are looking forward to it. All right. So I guess the obvious elephant in the room is, so who needled you or what needled you into deciding to take that giant step from being a guest to being a host? Well, we got some messages from the other side. Um, the spirits think that it's a good way for us to get our message out. Um we can bring some very, very in- interesting information to other people. Uh, the concept that we have is actually a learning experience. It's We kind of started the thing on YouTube with the Speaking to Spirit series that we do there. Mm-hmm. We have over 31 videos of historic figures up on our YouTube channel. Uh, I mean, we've talked to people from Moses to Abraham Lincoln to John Kennedy, uh, and many, many more. And I just thought that it would kind of lay a foundation for something that we could do on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, setting yourself up, are you? Uh, pretty <laughs> much, yeah, that's the way it looks. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, we've been talking about the, the trials and tribulations and things you need to know and how you need to do things. And, yeah, people think it's easy. It's not quite as easy as it seems, but... um no, it, it, it's easy being a guest because the heat is on the host. You know, yeah. they can, they can, they if, if things get quiet, they, you know, they carry the load. Mm-hmm. But but on on this show, it's going to be Connie and myself mm-hmm. and and the spirits. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I can look them in the eyeball and you know or see them on a see them on the Skype screen or anything. And we really have no idea how this show is going to, you know, where, where any show is going to head. Because we're totally dependent on the channeled answers from the other side. So it's, it's kind of a unique concept. Well, fortunately, I mean, most of the people that you've talked to on the other side have been relatively friendly. Um, and, and so, you know, very helpful. And then, of course, there's Laura, the channeler, the in-between, um, that can also kind of 
field things and make it easier for you. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of Laura as our producer from the other side. <laughs> she handles the guests, talks to them, get them gets them ready, you know, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That that's that's a good thing because she's she's definitely on your side. <laughs> yeah, for, uh, for those who uh, Laura is our main spirit guide from the other side, and she's the one <clears throat> when we have questions or we want to talk to somebody, we ask her to go get the spirit. And somehow or other, there is this uh, paging system on the other side, and she goes and gets them, and all of a sudden, there they are, and we're speaking with them. Mm-hmm. So she's she, she is utterly amazing with the information she has access to. Yeah, and she's a nice person too. Oh yes, yes. I mean she that that helps because sometimes I mean you you've run into this and I have too. There there have been guides and and contacts who are really kind of business like to the point of not being friendly. And um, oh yeah. We've had yeah. some of those. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's dealing with them and then having somebody like Laura who always seems to be very uplifting and very happy and um, friendly and, and willing to do bend over backwards, you know. I mean, it's that's a good thing. You're very yeah. lucky. Yeah, and what we're planning for the first show is, is we're going to try to lay a, an informational foundation so everybody understands what we do. <clears throat> And really, we're going to be, in the first show, we will restrict our channeling to Laura. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, She's going to explain what spirit guides do, mm-hmm. uh, maybe some of her secrets on how she comes up with what it's like on the other side. <clears throat> but basically, the first show, we're not, Laura is going to be the guest. Mm-hmm. And she will be, be speaking through me, and we will be looking at the chat room, and hopefully the people will be asking questions that we can ask her. Mm-hmm. So this is the, this will be a rare opportunity for people to ask questions of a spirit guide and a very high-ranking guide. I mean, she's, she's one of the best and one of the highest over there on the other side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's, you know, that, that kind of goes along with um, – Tonight, hoping that people will ask you questions about what you do, how you do it, why you do it, you know, all the all the, the five W's, I guess, mm. um, just to get to know you. Because I, I think while I'm looking at the chat room, most everybody are regulars to my show. And thank mm-hmm. you guys for being that. Um, and, and there's a ton of them in there, and especially for you, you're... You're running a lot tonight. Tonight, but um, it, I think it's kind of important for people to uh, the ones that aren't in the chat room, the ones that don't hear you every time you come on, to get to know you better, who you are, what you do, and all that. I think it's a, a really great way to begin because that getting to know you thing is is important. It is, and we thank you for giving us the opportunity to do that. Oh, Piffle, you're welcome. <laughs> no, no, you've, you've actually been very instrumental in laying the foundation for us to have this concept and for going ahead. And we, we really appreciate everything that you've done for us on this. So yeah. it's going Thank to be a very interesting time, but it's also, you know, thanks to you, basically, that we we're going to try to take this big step and get and get it done. No, it's not thanks to me. It's thanks to the fact that you can do it and will do it. And, I mean, you know, I, there are a lot of people that think they can, you know, the little engine that could. And sometimes they make it to the top and sometimes they slide back down. But with all your Facebook uh, things, all your appearances that you do on so many shows, I mean, you're primed and ready for that. You you know, you know how to be a host. And in a way, you're hosting the spirits that you talk to um, when you're channeling. Yeah, yeah. When we do our YouTube uh, videos, we are hosting the spirits, and then we we are carrying ourselves. Mm-hmm. But it's but it's still rare that we go for an hour. Uh, I can just imagine that we run out of words and nothing's there. But uh, that that will that's never happen. where we count on Laura. Yeah, I mean that that's not going to happen. You have the whole other side at your beck and call, and. There shouldn't be a problem. I mean, you know, when my guests cancel at the last minute, I'm stuck sometimes, mm-hmm. especially when it's always at the last minute. Oh, um, 
yeah, so that that's when you throw on the encore show. But there are people um, far better than me that can actually hold that hour all by themselves and not even in the blink of an eye. I get, I mean, my I get, you know, palpitations and stuff when that <laughs> happens because it's just I don't have that much to say. Um, so uh, yeah, so you're ready for it. You're you know you're ready. You're willing. You're able. And and um, I know that we've been talking about some of the different shows that you're, you're channeling shows that you're going to line up, um, and they sound really interesting. I mean, I mean, as you said, you cover all bases. You go from from religious to politics to uh, famous people in in many different uh, genres, and so it's it's a great combination because over the weeks there's something for everybody. Well, one thing, that show we talked about for Halloween, I think, is a winner. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, I mean, to the listeners, we're playing. uh, Marla is going to come on the show with us, and we're going to try to channel some of the individuals from the Salem witch hunting fiasco that took place. Uh, We're going to try to talk to some of the spirits that were actually burned at the stake and that lived through the winter the, and tell the story, what really took place. And I think that is going to make a magnificent uh, Halloween show. Yeah, it will. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to, I've got two questions, two, a comment and a question from the chat room. Um, Sherry says she misses Moo. <laughs> so do I, Sherry. <laughs> yeah, we all miss Moo. He's moved on. Yeah, but, well, but they have told me that they have we have got aliens available to us, and we will do shows where we are channeling with aliens and let people ask questions themselves. That's what I said across the board, and this mm-hmm. is where this is where you draw your biggest audience because it's not just one thing, you know. You got something for everybody, which is great. All right, um, Kathy, she says, "How do you come to commu- How did you come to communicate with the heavenly beings? Did they?" Did you trust the connection they had, or did they doubt ever? Did you ever doubt the info um, as to who you were really talking to? Well, that's kind of a long story. Uh, this this whole thing we doubted from the start. Uh, I mean, the last thing I ever suspected uh, fifteen years ago was that I was going to be able to channel spirits and and speak to the highest of the spirits. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, as you know, we started out with the channeling board and found out that we could get messages spelled out for us on the board. And then all of a sudden I started hearing the words in my head. And we'd hit the first letter and I'd hear the word. And then one night I was talking to Laura and she said, you don't need the board anymore. You just need the self-confidence to do this. So the next time we did an appearance where we had a channel, we didn't have the board there and I did the whole thing in my head and it's 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 in the beginning we had incredible doubts about what was taking place uh when you don't see something and you're just hearing and hearing these words come you take it you it's a world of doubt in the beginning in the beginning we didn't feel the energies for instance um once we had jesus come through the first time and mary and we felt those incredible energies, we started to have the ability to tell whether it was real or not simply from the energy that we were feeling. Uh, I mean, in the first time uh, Jesus ever comes through for us, it's like, you gotta be kidding. Uh, There's no way (laughs) that we can be talking, you know, to the Holy Father. And what he did he said, I'm going to, I'm, to prove it to you, I'm going to give you the ability to heal others. And he gave me some names that gave, wanted me to go heal, and he gave me this special prayer. And the, I, the people came to me that he named, and I said the prayer for them, and they were healed. And I went, holy mackerel, yeah, you know, we really are talking to the man. It's, uh, it, it's a miracle in itself. But... It's it's a very unique situation when I'm doing this channeling. 
because I'm I'm in a very light trance, and I I don't really remember much of what I do, but I am just the words that are coming out of my mouth are the words of the spirit. And it's really hard to describe. It's not like I hear the word and repeat it. It's just like the word comes and I speak the word. And, I mean, we've gotten very fast at it now. Um, we can cover a lot of ground in 30 minutes with our channeling, if you watch any of our YouTube channel. But, yes, in the beginning, we had many, many doubts. Uh, when, we were, when we started out channeling with famous figures, when I was writing the conspiracy book, I would make up all these specific questions to ask. <clears throat> and the spirit, they would answer these details. And it would be, and that's how we would prove to us that we really had the spirit with us. And it's just, uh, it's been a progression. I mean, and then we decided, I decided we wanted to try to channel angels. And then here comes Michael, Gabriel, you know, all the big, all the big gun archangels come through and we channel them. Uh, we got, I think, seven Archangels videos up on the YouTube channel now. And we will definitely be doing shows where we have angels coming through. And we will give people the opportunity to ask questions of a real Archangel. Now, that's pretty unique in, in radio history, I think. So, There's a lot of record-breaking different things that you're going to be doing. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, not at all concerned that that it's going to be very humdrum or whatever mundane um there's another question from the chat room um whoops it scrolled back hang on oh what is the highest spirit that you've spoken to god <laughs> that's as high as it gets okay that yeah i <laughs> I, I, did, I didn't have to think too hard on that one yeah no, I, no, I, I can't, I can't quibble easy. with that that one's pretty easy but we've um, also, you know, we've also sp spoke with the, you know, the highest of the saints, St. Peter, Matthew, Timothy. Um, Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene, uh, Mother Mary. Uh, actually, the first really high, high ranking spirit that came through for us in a channeling session was Mother Mary. Uh, she came through with a message for a woman. And the first time we felt that energy, we all had tears coming down our face. It was just, it was incredible. But uh, she was actually the first of the highest of the of the spirits to come through for us. Mm -hmm. Well, um, there's a follow-up question. Um, what did God say? Just curious. And, and uh, yeah, I guess it's just that simple. <laughs> well, <laughs> what did, yeah. well, what you have to understand is Jesus, when he walks the earth, <clears throat> was God incarnate. He was he was the personification of God. So when we get these channeled messages from Jesus, we are essentially speaking to the universal energy of God. Uh, and sometimes sometimes he refers the message will refer to himself as God. Sometimes he refers to it as Jesus. But they are interchangeable. And, you know mm -hmm. the the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yeah, and someday I need to be explained to that because his Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, it confuses me. But don't go into it now. That, that's going to be a long conversation because I might be, I might be pretty stupid about it. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not stupid. It's just it's something that we can't imagine because it's nothing that we have seen on Earth in this lifetime. Well, that's, that's so it's very hard to grasp it in your head. Yeah, sometimes it's much easier being pagan. Um, <laughs> yeah, <it's> not, <laughs> not quite as complicated, although we, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> what I would like to add, she asked about what Jesus has to say. Yeah. His main thing is, love me, love yourself, love each other, and be kind to each other. That's his main message. Yeah, and, and we, and, you know, we channel with, we channel with spirits other than than Christian spirits. Right. Uh, we've done Buddha. <clears throat> I think we've done Gandhi. And it's just, it, we work not as a, we'll channel more Christian spirits than other spirits, obviously. But it's the, it's the universal message. It's a message for everybody. It's a message for pagan. It's a message mm -hmm. for Buddhist, Hindu. It's uh, our, the, what we channel is the message of the many paths to heaven. 
and the many paths to fulfillment. Um, I mean, we even discuss uh, the primitives that have never heard of a God. Uh, they go to heaven just the same as anybody else, even though they never heard of it. So it, it's a universal message we try to bring. Uh, a lot of people don't approve of our messages, obviously, mm-hmm. but too bad. You know, it, it is what it is. So well, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a messenger. All I do is speak the words of the spirits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know that—that's all we can do. I know there. Yeah, I think people get uh, pointed in a wrong direction when they see the charlatans on TV begging for money, and you know their word is the only word, and and this and that, and they don't believe what they're doing. They're in it for the wrong reason. You know, mm-hmm. they're they're out to rook people. Um, and I always say that you guys are not that way at all. You believe in everything that you do, and so you know that that kind of makes a difference than you know somebody that says, hey, "Send money here." <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> that just it, it's it, there's a big difference. Now, also the other thing that that came to mind when you were talking about the different genres that you speak of. Um, I know, or, or correct me if I'm wrong, that some people down the line are going to ask you about some of the lower level entities, you know, some of the hateful people that we don't really want to talk about or, or whatever, or, or don't want their spirit around. If you mention mm-hmm. their name, you know, like Beetlejuice, you don't want to call them in. Um, so Laura kind of um, is a, a, a doorkeeper. In, in that respect, but would there be a chance of that ever happening for for whatever reason? I don't know, but you know. Well, we are incredibly well protected. You now, Connie and I say our prayer of protection before we ever start any show, mm-hmm. so that lays our foundation for it. Right. Laura is our protectors as well as you know we have angel protectors as well, mm-hmm. and the first thing. When we started learning channeling, the very, very first thing that the spirits told us was never, ever invite evil. Never ask for it. Never look for it. Mm -hmm. So when people ask for, say, can you channel Hitler? Mm -hmm. We say absolutely not. First of all, because he's not available because he's in that lower level. But but we, we really don't attempt to channel lower level spirits. Mm -hmm. Uh, I started writing a book on unsolved crimes and we got through a couple, maybe five or six of them. Uh, We did a session on Jack the Ripper and D.B. Cooper and a bunch of them. And then all of a sudden the guides come in and say, this is not what you're supposed to be doing because you are, you, you will be inviting lower level spirits that are evil Mm -hmm. through this. And he said, we're, we're not going to assist you in this. You need to stop. So we mm-hmm. did, and that was the end of it. Yeah, it, it's a smart thing. Um, you know, my my friend, the late Kenny Kingston, um, he wrote several books on who he's still speaking to. You know, it, it, one of his good books was I Still Talk To, because he was, you know, psychic to two presidents and Marilyn Monroe's last psychic and a lot of, and a lot of people. And he didn't call out at one point to get a hold of Hitler, but they told him, because I guess there was some question about it, that even now, all these years later, you know, because I think they were talking about maybe the spirits evolve and they they get, you know, free from being such bad people and, and whatever. But Kenny said that, and it's a really scary chapter in his book, um, on Hitler and but they say he is still shunned on the other side I mean completely shunned it's just like no hope you know and you never want him to get loose from there because it would wreak havoc so yeah it's better you know it's like the old saying goes don't don't conjure anything that you can't banish Uh, that's a good saying yes yeah it is no, right. we're, very, we're very careful about it. I mean, we've, we've yeah. had people have to do on, when we do call in shows, uh, ask for things and we just cut it right off. It's just it's just some, not something I'm going to play with. It's not something I truly understand. Mm-hmm. It's just not something I'm going to do. Yeah, 
it's better safe than sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the Wizard of Odd, Justin wants to know if you have set the date yet for the first show, and I know it's kind of up in. I think up. it's going to be the twenty seventh of September. That'll okay. be the. La- I think it's going to be the last Sunday of September. The way it looks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. Um, question from Ceiling Cat: How are guides different in those who use a spirit box versus channeling guides, or are they the same? They can be the same, or they can be different. Uh, when you're when you're using a spirit box, I'm assuming you're talking about a ghost box with the, mm-hmm. where you hear the words. Yeah. Well, that that can be the spirits themselves. That you have a, this, a, a regular uh, spirit entity can come in and speak and not the guides. We have never been able to communicate with a guide on a spirit box. Mm -hmm. We've been able to communicate with guides on the channeling board and through my head. But uh, we we never were able to get a message on a a ghost box or spirit box from a guide. It's Mm -hmm. always just been spirits. Yeah, so you can't really... um have any control of who comes through and and you know divination is a scary thing and some people just are very willy-nilly about it sure let's get a ouija board let's call zozo or whoever it is um yeah. you know or and, and you know it just doesn't make sense to play to, with uh, playing with fate no it's uh it's very dangerous i mean it's we we can tell you about evil spirits i mean we've had them try to come through Mm-hmm. And and they've been knocked down. I mean, they, they don't let them through for us. But other people do not have the protections that we have. I mean, Connie and I were sent back to do this. Mm-hmm. And, and because of that, we do have special protections. But most people were not sent back to communicate with the other side. Mm-hmm. And they, they just need to be very, very careful. Yeah, and people are, they, they, they're not vigilantes, but they're thrill seekers. And so it's more exciting if you call somebody that could be potentially scary and do something. But, you know, sometimes you learn too late after you're already harmed in whatever way that maybe that wasn't the right thing to do. And and it's not that I'm preaching, you know, everything has to be love and light and beautiful and wonderful. I mean, there are you have the duality, light and dark, but you don't have to go after the dark. You don't have to chase it. Enough times it comes to us on its own. And there's many shades of dark. True. You, know, you don't you, you don't want to go after the really bad stuff. I mean Mm-mm. there there are people that specialize in yes. trying to remove demons from people. Mm-hmm. And it's it, it's very, very real. I mean mm-hmm. when you talk to the people that do these exorcisms, it's uh it's really scary stuff. So scary that even though protected as we are, I want no part of it. I mean, it's mm-hmm. not something I understand, <clears throat> and I I just don't want to tempt fate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, and that's the smart way to go. Um, another question: Do you guys feel the different energies of each spirit or angel or like Mother Mary, or is there a go between? Well, Laura is the go between. Um, or is there a go-between when you're channeling them? So do you uh, feel their energies as well? In in most instances, yes. Um, there's different levels of feeling it. Obviously, when Jesus is here, <clears throat> you feel this, this aura that's with him. Uh, Mary has a very loving energy. Uh, just it's really hard to describe. Uh, the angels... You feel their presence. Uh, when an angel's here, I can generally see them. Mm-hmm. But they have a different type of energy. <clears throat> the common, when we're, when we're dealing with, you know, common spirits, when people are asking questions about family members and stuff, I don't feel their energies. I mean, mm-hmm. I, just, I just feel the messages. But when you're dealing with the upper level souls and spirits, yes, you, you definitely know they're here. Mm-hmm. And it's good to know. All right, we're going to, in a couple of seconds, take a quick break um, for two minutes. And then <clears throat> we're going to talk about maybe a couple of some of the other upcoming ideas for shows that we've had. You, well, you and I talking, mm-hmm. just throwing things around. 
um, you know, just mentioning a few things, and that might get into the listeners' brains, and they may have some really good suggestions as well. Yes, yeah, we're looking for suggestions. Yep, so uh, everybody... I mean, Oh, There's 50, 52 weeks in a year, and that's 52 <laughs> shows, so you can go through people pretty fast. Yes, you can. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, everybody, put your thinking cap on, and we'll be back in two minutes. Stirring the Cauldron will be right back, so don't go away. If you end up with web feet, remember, you've been warned. warned. Explore the second edition of the Witch's Oracle deck through 45 innovative cards and enhanced guidebook that peers into the world of the witch. The deck's stunning artwork has a new look and includes seven brand new inspirational cards. Each card now includes a suggested crystal or gemstone to enhance your reading as well as a magical incantation that provides energy, reinforces the card's meaning, and helps the desired message to be sent out into the universe. The easy-to-navigate guide also has a new look and offers straightforward, gentle guidance that takes readers through both good times and bad. And now includes a chapter on crystal and gemstone divination by the amazing Nicholas Pearson. The Witch's Oracle. It is a perfect divination deck for witches as well as non-pagans and is designed to suit both seasoned readers and beginners alike. Find out more about the Witch's Oracle deck at www.marlabrooks.com and you can purchase the deck from shifferbooks.com, amazon.com or order a copy from your favorite bookseller. You've no doubt heard of Tango and Cash, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Perhaps it takes two to tango. Well, now, on the first and third Thursdays of each month, there's a show called Tango and Friends at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Para-X Radio Network with your host, Bruce Tango. And yes, there will be at least two to tango on each episode, sometimes even more. There's going to be lots of topics and lots of guests you'll all know and lots of surprises. Prizes. Tango and Friends, every first and third Thursday of the month at 8 p.m. right here on the Para-X Radio Network. Welcome back to Stirring the Cauldron. Once again, here's your host, Marla Brooks. And here we are back with Barry and Connie Strom, and we're talking about their new show, um, Channeling History. And we're talking about a few other things as we go along, but uh, the tease at the end was some of the the shows that we've been talking about back and forth just a little bit and and some ideas for for different shows. So let's talk a little bit about those because I think think that'll help everybody kind of think a little harder about what they wanted to. Yeah, I think one of the most interesting shows is going to be when we have President Kennedy come back on. We channeled him. We channeled him in the conspiracy book, and we've had it. We've done a, a YouTube video with him, and he is a wonderful spirit to interview. But I mean, the people might want to ask questions like, "Who really shot him? Uh, who was behind it? Why was it? Why did it take place?" <clears throat> There's a lot of really interesting questions, and uh, I think that show is going to be very enlightening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's very interesting. And I think the angel shows are going to be good. Uh, um, uh, Gabriel and Michael are very, very interesting to speak with. And pe- people really don't understand angels. Uh, the concept of Satan being a fallen angel, for instance, is, is totally incorrect. Because there's never been such a thing as a fallen angel. Uh, but what they are, how they perform, what they can do, what they can accomplish, uh, very, very interesting. So we'll be speaking with a bunch of the different angels on the show as well. And also we were kind of talking about historical events and people that were there yes. when they happened. And, um, yeah, uh, that was that was really kind of an interesting thought because, you know, we always say, I wish I could have been there. I wish I could have seen what really happened. I wish I could have known how people were reacting and things like that. And it's possible to find out. 
Yeah, I'll tell you one very, very interesting interview is going to be when Moses comes on for us. Uh, because the true story of the Exodus is very, very different than what is what is written in the Gospels. <clears throat> and when he tells you the real story of what takes place, it becomes very, very believable. Mm-hmm. Uh, the parting of the sea, that's, you know, it's really hard to conceive that God parted the Red Sea <clears throat> and he could bring his thousands of people across the bottom for a hundred miles of that, uh, of the sea, because it's very, very wide. But Jesus or God really does part a sea for him. And when he tells the story, you, you understand exactly what did take place. And the whole Exodus becomes very believable. You know, the universe is listening to us because, or they were listening when you and I were talking, um, Mm -hmm. A week or two ago, because here's the last two things that are said in chat in the chat room. Hearing about what happened at the Titanic would be interesting. And the next comment was, I was just thinking that, too. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. they, they were not prodded. I mean, you know, I'm sitting here thinking about that. When yeah, I it was historical. one of the things we talked about. Yeah. Yes, yes. The captain of the Titanic, perhaps. Yeah, we're um, through, I think that's a very doable thing. Uh, mm-hmm. They're telling me that the captain of the Titanic would be available for interview. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe, and maybe talk to one of the band members. Yeah, that's what I was saying. You yeah. know, I mean, they they were kind of the heroes. They played and sunk with the ship as mm-hmm. well as the captain, but they were playing musical instruments. I can't even imagine them being able to play knowing that they were, you know, on death's door right then. That's it. Oh, yeah. They were amazing people. Yeah, so yeah, that was it. I, when I just saw that. Now it just made me crack up because that yeah, was really. one, one of the things that I said. Hey, Barry, you know about the Titanic, <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then we talked about it, and it made some sense. But there are, I think, a lot of historical events out there, um, and and maybe not even that that long ago. I mean, go back a hundred years or something. Not doesn't have to go back thousands. But there are things that uh, I think if, if all the listeners put their thinking caps on, like the two that thought about the Titanic, um, that, they could come up with some really good shows. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yeah, and we're, and we're going to welcome input and suggestions. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, this whole thing is going to be flying by the seat of our pants. I mean, we're, we're going to come in with a basic outline and... Where it goes from there, who knows? Because it's going to depend. We're going to depend heavily on listener participation through chat. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, even I mean, we if people want to come to us before the show with questions, mm-hmm. you know, they could email us questions, and we can do, and we could work it out that way. Mm-hmm. But it's uh, we're going to be relying very, very heavily on the listeners, and well, yeah. and when you do that. You have no concept of where you're headed. You don't, but that's who we're doing it for to begin with. And mm-hmm. and um, yeah, as I said, you've got you you've got a strong pair of suspenders on, so don't worry about losing the pants as you're <laughs> you know flying through the air. Um, and the other thing is, you've got Laura, and there's always going to be questions about different things um, as it comes, as it goes, and that's. I, I don't see that you're going to have a problem in that respect. There's always going to be something to talk about. There's always going to be somebody coming through. Because, I mean, right now, if I said, you know, somebody, poof, come through. Come on, Laura, tell us who's here. There will be somebody in, you know, five minutes. So, I mean, it, it's just that simple. You know, you don't need to worry about it at all. I can't do that with my guests. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to learn to channel or something in, in case I get in trouble. Yeah, then I can always, you know, call on somebody. But, yeah, it, it's – that that's the least of your worries. I mean, you're going to be overwhelmed with so many good things um, and so many interesting things that – It's going to be an experience. Um, yeah. It's it, – it's, for Connie and I, it's going to be an adventure. Mm-hmm. Because this is really uh, unplowed ground for us. This is something we've never. I mean, we've been, we've done it with the, with the videos and things, 
but to know that you have a, a live listening audience out there and to know that uh, that you cannot have any dead air time that, that that's a definite no no mm-hmm. so it's uh we're looking forward to it now you know ceiling what? cat sorry um mm-hmm. Ceiling Cat said it would be interesting to hear from some controversial ones like General Custer, and and you've spoken to him. He's in your oh, conspiracy yeah. book, isn't he? Oh yeah, no, I've written a whole chapter with General Custer. Uh, very very interesting guy, and I uh, with his personality, he would love to come through. <laughs> Not shy, is he? No, 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 no. <laughs> he was he was he had the exact personality. Uh, yeah, when he came through, he, he said, "Are you folks union?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, North and South union, not yeah, you know, organized yeah. labor. Obviously. Right, right, yeah. But uh, oh yeah, no, he was uh, <laughs> he was very outstanding and mm-hmm. outspoken. But I, I, we devoted a whole chapter to him in the conspiracy book. Very, very interesting guy. And what's, I, I posted the book in the um, chat room, a picture of it, but for those who are listening on the podcast, what was the name of that book? Spirit Speak of Conspiracies and Mysteries. Well, we, we did 27 conspiracies in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and another one that we'll be bringing back will be uh, General George Patton. Mm-hmm. Because his, the story of his death is nothing uh, like what I was prepared to hear. Yeah. And, I mean, that chapter in the conspiracy book, was wild, to say the least. I remember that. Yeah. In another field, John Lennon wants to come through and do one of the shows. Yeah, oh, John. Cool. Yeah, we John. Uh, we promised him about a couple months ago that we would do an interview with him, and then we got sidetracked with a few physical things here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we have not been as active as we should be. But uh, no, John's going to definitely do an interview for us. I would uh, love that. Yeah, yeah, we'll have Marilyn Monroe on one time. We have two other suggestions in the chat room, Amelia Earhart and, well, maybe three, and Bonnie and Clyde. (laughs) Oh, Bonnie and Clyde. Uh, (laughs) Never did them. We did. We had done Billy the Kid Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Sundance Kid. See? And Tabby in the chat room said her father served with Patton, so that would be a wonderful topic. Yeah, my father served under him, too. And when we were talking to General Patton, I told him how my dad served under him. And all these years later, he still talks about what a wonderful person he was because he did meet him. Oh. And he said, I will meet him when he comes to this side. My dad passed away a year and a half ago. And when he came through, we asked him, we said, did you see General Patton? He said, yeah, I was really shocked. <laughs> Yeah, geez. Yeah. Well, I know all my family, my dad and and everybody were in the Navy, so they didn't really run into too many, too many people that I know of. But hey, mm-hmm. you know, there. I mean, if if people are into history, I mean, this is the perfect outlet to find out things, to ask questions about things that you've read about and stuff. I mean, some of the stuff is that we read is probably correct, some of it isn't. But it, to talk to people that were at specific incidents, um, you know, like people that were in the Civil War. So here's here's my thing about the Civil War. I mean, the way they fought. Here they lined up on opposite fields with with not much um, except a rifle, perhaps, and a and a stabber. Oh my God, I forgot mm-hmm. what to call that. <laughs> a bayonet. Uh, bayonet. Thank you. Oh my God. A stabber. Uh, a stabber. <laughs> uh, but how how are these men? How are how is any man brave enough to be facing your enemy with very little and knowing that you're probably going to die? I mean, it it it's amazing to me. I mean, I know in in all the wars it, it's kind of like that, but to me in the Civil War it just you see these things, you see the reenactments and things, and oh my God, so many heroes and so many lost souls. It it just oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, having a prior life where I served in the Civil War, I can tell you about it, you know. <laughs> See? Yeah, I mean. Oh, so, okay, somebody um, said Cleopatra. What did happen to Cleopatra? I like that. Yeah, yeah. that would be very interesting. Yeah, we're thinking um, she was on my list to do for the Speaking to Spirits. We just never got to her. Mm-hmm. She's very interesting. And another one we're going to do is we'll have Abraham and Mary Todd Lincoln present. 
so so that people can ask them questions. Well, she was very interesting because she was really into ghosts and spirits and, oh, yeah. and spiritualism. So that um, I think um, would be really interesting to hear about because you know, para oh. X, paranormal. Oh yeah, no, we have we have videos on YouTube with both of them. Mary Todd did come through for a session, and Abraham did as well. So no, we've already talked to them, but it. I can tell you when we get them live on the radio, it will be a very interesting session. Yeah. And it's fu- funny, I just, um, when I was talking about the Civil War, MJ um, in chat room, he served in the Marines in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. And he said, um, it's the definition of courage. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Yep. That is it. Yeah, no, he nailed it. <laughs> That's- Bless them all and thank you for your service, MJ. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And then, okay, here's another one. Somebody wants to know the truth behind the death of George Reeves, Superman. So, see, you, you've got already like two months worth. <laughs> <laughs> you better be uh, taking notes here. Yeah, you better be taking notes because, well, that's it. You know, there's just so many mysteries and so many wonderful things. You know, I mean, I don't think people are only going to go for the bad stuff. They're going to go for some of the happy moments, the wonderful moments, the um, just absolutely amazing things that went on in this world that that we weren't able to be there, but we can only imagine how how joyful they might have been and things like that. I mean, you yeah. have an uh, – see, with, with the rest of us, we have a limited number of guests that we can choose from. You have everybody. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All the good guys. Well, yeah. So, um, yeah, it would be – It would be. Um, <laughs> Kat said um, in chat, she said, would be interesting to see what Honest Abe has to say about the current resident of the White House. Well, I'm sure he would be very honest, don't you think? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was. No, we, we've already we've, we've discussed that with him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, guys in the chat room, bless your hearts because this is this is the kind of thing that that keeps you know keeps the mind going and and then you know with me or other hosts who are doing live guests, you have to find a certain schedule. They they may not be there that day. They may not, like for me, can't come on a Thursday or the time difference from the UK is so many hours. So I'm limited to to certain things. You have no limitations whatsoever. whatsoever. Pretty much. Pretty much. No, it's, 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 I, th- I can not think of anybody else trying to do this. I think we really came up with a unique idea. Yeah. It is a very unique idea, and it's also something that the the people in that want to listen live can participate in. I mean, that's it. The interaction is really important because you listen. I mean, podcasts are great, and of course, not everybody can listen to live shows. And and it's true that that most of us get most of our listeners off the podcast rather than the live show. But if you can listen to a live show and you can ask questions and if you can be part of it, um, it, it's so much better. Yeah, we're really going to be counting on the audience. I mean, it's uh, I mean, we'll have background questions made up, but we want to rely simply on what comes through on the chat room if possible. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that'll make the most interesting show for us. It will. Um, And Kathy is saying, well, ooh, maybe she can find out about time travel um mm-hmm. you know i mean there's 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 nothing that's out of your range um I'm, no i mean I, I think the alien show is going to be really interesting mm-hmm. because people can actually ask questions of a of a spirit that was an alien in his last life mm-hmm. um, i mean our, our moo isn't available anymore but uh, laura has told me they they have a couple that are you know they're going to send in for us that can answer the questions Mm-hmm. One quick thing about Moo. Mm. He had a fan club all over the world, evidently, because Barry got an email one day from a guy over in the UK. Mm-hmm. He just bought himself a blue car and he named it Moo. Oh. Well, I'm, I'll tell you a secret. Um, Cece, Ceiling Cat, has a cat named Moo. But she ah. had a cat long before we knew Moo. So, mm-hmm. so there's, there's a Moo here and a Moo there, everywhere a Moo Moo. You got it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was bad. Yeah, that uh, was bad. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and, and I didn't even mention Hawaii. There. <laughs> oh, my God. It's going to get worse. It could be. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. stop now. Uh, um, somebody also just mentioned Bruce Lee. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, the minds are working, and, and it, it could be like, you know, everybody can can personalize what they want to hear from whom. And, I mean, we have to say that there are times that somebody may not be available to come through, but I know... Yeah, if they're reincarnated, we can't get to them. Well, that too. Yeah, there are some that are back that we can't reach, but... Right. But, yeah, but it's still um, an amazing way to... uh, to get in touch with people and, and to find out things and thank you for doing the show. I mean, thank you for the idea and everything because it, it's going to be really good. Well, I figure this is not my idea. Well, I know I, I, I have a hard time designating what I'm thinking of and what the spirits, the guides are putting into my head. Mm-hmm. So I, I have a feeling this is a natural progression that was supposed to take place. And sometimes I think we're just like, puppets that are they're pulling the strings from the other side and supplying the information and you know how they you know how they make a uh, puppet move its mouth and speak mm-hmm. yep very very similar concept yeah we're the tools and and that's not a bad thing necessarily <laughs> but um they know and and we're going to learn and it's going to be a whole lot of fun i mean fun it's 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 going to be educational it's going to be interesting um so so you mentioned abraham lincoln so um x-men said so abraham lincoln wasn't lucky enough to be reincarnated uh no he hasn't decided to come back yet and 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 i think mary doesn't intend to come back she was very dissatisfied with the treatment she got over here so yeah, because, I mean, I've always thought this, and, and you know better than I since you, you have your in over there, but I think, you know, it's up to the spirit to decide whether to come back or not. Uh, yes. Exactly correct. You got, you got free will over there as easy as you do here. Yeah. So. You make your own decision. And I'll tell you, another very interesting show we will do is when we address the Lincoln conspiracy mm-hmm. uh, and John Wilkes Booth and what really happened to John Wilkes Booth. Mm-hmm. We have a chapter in the conspiracy book about that, but I think everybody will be really interested in that when we do that one. Mm-hmm. And also, um, <laughs> Kathy said, I wonder if there are any Neanderthals who would want to speak up. <laughs> you never and, know. And Hitman said, would we understand them? <laughs> <laughs> well, our guides would translate for us. Yeah. Okay. Well, see, they're good. We. Yeah. Don't... No, it, it's amazing. Uh, whatever language it is, it always comes through in English for us. I mean, these people spoke languages that we never heard of. I mean, um, the, the the saints spoke Aramaic. Mm-hmm. And when they talk, it's just uh, the guides bring it right to you in English. Well, and I think that's because I don't know. I, I, call me crazy, but I think. Over there, everything sounds the same, so everybody will understand it. I think the the languages and stuff were when they were here. But I think there's another language up there that's universal, so there probably isn't that problem. Well, there's a lot of mental communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a... As we say, it's a whole different world over there. Mm Mm-hmm. And we're going to learn a whole lot about that different world over there. Um... Every yeah, I, I think night? one. I think one of the biggest hurdles we're going to have is a lot of people are going to doubt that we really truly can do this. And you're also not in the business of trying to convince anybody, right? Nope, they can believe or not believe. Yeah, we've got such a large body of evidence out there now for what we do through our YouTube channel and all the years of shows and things that we have done. We have a lot of evidence saying that yes, it's. it's we really are doing this, and uh, I think if people give us a chance and listen, they will come to the conclusion, yeah, well, we really do have a unique gift, and we are trying to let others enjoy it and listen to it and understand that we have access to things that other people just simply don't. So. And here's the thing. There are people that 
should not uh, believe in it. They're not ready to. They're, you oh, know, you're right about that. For yeah. whatever reason. So, you know, if somebody doesn't believe it, that's fine. You know, that's not their their path right now. You know, there's some reason that they're not ready to accept it. I mean, the same thing with, with all paranormal stuff. You know, there are people who are naysayers and very strong naysayers, and they're going to continue to be. And no matter what you say, you can't change their mind, and there's no point in it because they're not ready. No. So, you know. No, just, that's, just like an atheist is not going to believe. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, if you don't believe in that, you're not going to believe in ghosts. You're not going to believe in spirits. And you're not going to believe in the reincarnation of the soul. So. Mm-hmm. And I think the best advice for anybody is just keep an open mind. You don't have to agree, but keep an open mind. It's that simple. And we've got like two minutes, and I know you've got a new book you're working on or coming out, so let's get that in before we have to run like hell. Yes, we will have a new book coming out. It is called Spirit Speak, Channeling the Message of Jesus and the Holy Spirits. It will be out the beginning of November after the election because we are not going to put the book out with all the craziness going on right now. (laughs) Yes, it is crazy. It's very, very crazy. So where can people find you and and your um, YouTube pages and all that good stuff? Uh, YouTube is my name, Barry Strom. Uh, we have a couple websites. We have spiritspredict.com. Uh, we have words of God, then and now.com. Uh, we have a Facebook page. We have a Facebook group called Words of God, then and now. So a lot of ways to catch up. But the easiest way, the end of this month, is going to be to tune into Parax. Oh, you're a built-in salesman right off the bat. You, <laughs> you just hit the ground running, which is really, really good. <laughs> so, all right. I um, want to thank you guys not only for you know being on here tonight, but all the good shows that you've put on so far. And that just because you have your own show doesn't mean you're not going to come back on other people's also. So, No, we love this show. This, well, is, this has been one of our foundations. Yeah, and others, too. You do a lot of shows, and, and so, you know, it's like all of us, we have our own show, but we do other people's show, too. So, mm-hmm. And um, at some point, you'll be p- probably putting the shows up on Podomatic, so people that can't listen live can listen also that way, as well as your YouTube channel. Yeah, we're so, going to try to stick it as many places as we can, try to do the best we can with it. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw a couple of things at you and tell you how to do it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Both of uh-huh. you stay well, stay happy, and we'll see you in a few weeks. And thank you, everybody in the chat room, for contributing and asking questions and being really excited about this show, too. Don't forget, it's called Channeling History on Sunday nights, I think, at what, 10 o'clock Eastern? Nine or 10. Nine those, or 10. I think. Okay. All right. Well, until next time, everybody, blessed be and merry meet again. Good night. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Please join us again next week at the same time for another great guest and more cauldron stirring. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without explicit permission is strictly prohibited.